Hello and welcome to an Acronis Support Quick Tip powered by the CyberFit Academy. My name is Mark Hammer and I'm very pleased to go over how to create a protection plan for you today. Uh, to start with, you need to log into your console and you'll see here I have the Acronis console already up uh, and there are two locations you can go to to add a protection plan to a device. If you've already installed the agent and it's listed in your console, you could highlight a device here uh, by simply clicking on it in the middle pane and the right hand options will show up. You would want to click on protect and from here uh, when it loads, you can uh, click on add a plan or review an existing plan that's already applied to that particular machine. Or what you can do is come over here to the management tab over here on the left uh, and you'll notice that protection plans is highlighted by default. Uh, when this opens up, you can come over here on the right hand side and click a new plan. Or if you wanted to edit an existing plan, you can simply click on that plan and you can come over here and click on edit. Um, today, we're going to create a new plan. We get a lot of questions about what to back up, where to back up, scheduling, retention and encryption. And I wanted to make a quick uh, video to show you guys what to back up, where to go and all that fun stuff. So to start off with, you know, work top to bottom. You'll notice here uh, that plans can require advanced packs. If you do need an advanced pack, it will mention it here at the top and it will tell you which advanced pack is going to need to be enabled. Uh, and so from a backup standpoint, we're going to start here with what to backup. The options are as follows. You have the entire machine, disks or volumes, files and folders, Microsoft SQL data, various other applications like Exchange, ESXi, uh, and things of that nature. So you need to choose what you want to backup. Most of the time people choose entire machine, or maybe you have a very specific file folder you want to backup. You know, so for example, if I want to backup on a Windows machine, I can click over here on specify and I can add a rule uh, that shows things like all, you know, program files or all user profiles, or, you know, if I'm on a Linux machine, I can do the root or a user or a home file. So you can add, you know, generic rules for multiple machines and you can build out uh, your plans accordingly. Uh, but like I said, for today's demo, we're going to choose entire machine. That's probably the most common one that we see. Uh, once you choose what you want to back up, you need to decide where you want to back up. So here are your options. By default, you know, it's going to look into the locations that you've already set up. So this could be local storage, which you can add right here if you want to back it up locally, uh, which is usually not recommended. You know, local storage is going to be fast to recover, but it could also be lost during the, uh, an event or a problem. You know, you can use a script like Python. Uh, you can do a network folder. You could do cloud storage. Uh, if I choose network folder, it's going to ask me to, you know, plug in the name, whether it's a fully qualified domain name or an IP address. I, you know, it can be an SMB share and all that fun stuff. So once you choose a location, you know, if I type in my you know, storage server here, uh, backups, click on add, uh, it's going to prompt me, uh, or it's going to add that to the list. You know, it's going to ask me for the credentials uh, for the name of that particular storage if it hasn't been stored already. So uh, we're going to choose cloud storage, and this is going to prompt me to actually uh, log in if you haven't logged in. Uh, just remember that where you want to backup, it, cloud storage is always going to be the last link in the chain. You do have the option to replicate these backups in multiple locations. Just remember that cloud is the last link in that chain. From a scheduling standpoint, you can choose when you want these backups to run. We have a very comprehensive way to do this. Uh, we have, you know, various different backup schemes. You can choose, you know, grandfather, father, son, which is very common in the industry. You can choose when all these different times run. So when your full backups run, when your differential backups run, when your incremental backups run, you know, you can click on each of these links and change the schedules to monthly, weekly, daily, hourly. You can back up, you know, every 15 minutes if you so choose, or you can choose weekly, monthly. You can run it every day, run it Monday through Friday. We have all the options that you see here on the screen. Uh, and, you know, most people typically run, you know, full backups on a monthly basis or a weekly basis. You're not doing full backups every day. You know, differentials and incrementals, uh, you will assign accordingly. Now, from a retention standpoint or how long it keeps standpoint, this is where you get to assign for each of the types of the backups that you defined in the previous step. You can choose how long you want to keep them and how many different ways you are, or how many different versions. There's a couple ways to do this. By default, we choose by backup age, which is the cleanup. You could also do number of backups. I know customers that say, I want to keep 30 backups or 60 backups, and that's one way to do this. Um, but the default one is by the age of the backup. You can keep them indefinitely if storage isn't an issue for you or if you have that requirement from an oversight or a regulation uh, for the industry that you're in. You could also do it based off of size. If you're a service provider and you're providing two terabytes of storage, you could set this to two terabytes. And this is one way to make sure that you're never going over that two terabyte limit. Uh, but like I said, by default, we choose by age and you could adjust these based on the criteria and the needs of the customer with whom you are working. All right. 
from an encryption standpoint, this is very important to understand. You cannot add encryption after you've already created the backup plan. So if you've already applied a backup plan to a machine and you have then decided that, ooh, I forgot, I wanted to encrypt that, you have to start over again. Encryption has to be set at the very beginning. You choose a password, you confirm the password, and then you choose the uh, algorithm or the level of encryption you want to apply. Uh, you need to make sure you write this down and you test it because we cannot recover this password for you. There's no secret backdoor. This is on you. Once you set this and enable this, you must know what it is and remember it. So make sure you have that documented in a secure location. Uh, and again, you cannot apply encryption after the fact. So those are some of the basics when it comes to creating a protection plan. Uh, you know, you can also do application backups as you see here. We can do separate videos where we'll talk about these on a more individual basis, but just know that if there is a particular application or database that your uh, business is running or your customer is running, we have specific application aware features for everything you see here listed on the screen, such as Oracle, cPanel, Active Directory, and a lot of the other Microsoft uh, or SQL technologies that are out there. Thanks for watching the video today. Have a great day.